Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I am Nurul Huda and I have created this YouTube channel with the intention of educating people regarding research and PhD life. Uh, with my uh, exposure to the research, I have found that there is very less information uh, regarding research, regarding PhD among the students, among people who are preparing for it. They know that yes, there is something to be done in research to get into it, but they don't know what exactly goes into it. So this channel is made just for that intention. If you are also one of them who want to learn more about PhD life or who want to learn more about research in India and abroad, so do subscribe to this particular channel. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about that what exactly happens during the first year of your PhD. Because a lot many students know that, okay, you have to crack entrance exam or you have to take admission to get into PhD and there are various methods of getting into PhD like by going through the entrance exam or by passing a gate exam and going into IITs or by passing uh, CSIR net and JRF and getting into universities and CSIR labs. So there are so many different ways The all those things I have already discussed in the previous videos but what exactly we are going to talk about that what happens during the first year of your PhD. So that is very unknown and that is very like something which people don't know about. So I have, whatever I'm going to tell you is going to be followed in most of the institutes in India. So that is what the motive of this video will be that what happens during the first year of your PhD when you are doing PhD in India. All right. So it starts from your admission. Once you take admission in PhD, at that time you get enrolled into your PhD. Okay. You are not registered at that time. You are enrolled into your PhD. So uh, once you get enrolled, all the basic things get started. Like if you already have a, a PhD scholarship, uh, the research scholarship that get started, you start getting your scholarship. If you don't have a scholarship, you start getting your institute fellowship. So, so many things, whatever related to the financial things are there, they all initiate once you take admission. Okay. And once you, once you're done with all the paperwork, I'll make a, a separate video on it that how to start your GRF fellowship and all. So those things will be done in a separate video. But yeah, so what happens that after taking admission, all the financial things start to take place. And on the other hand, there are two ways or there are two uh, methods or two uh, ways which are followed throughout in India. Generally, IITs and ISERs, they follow a method in which uh, once you are, take the admission, you are enrolled into a particular coursework. So coursework is something which everyone has to do, whether wherever you take admission, IITs, ISERs, institute, universities, anywhere you have to go through coursework that's the basic rule of UGC which you have to follow so once you are enrolled into a coursework coursework is going to be uh, like it is going to contain uh, theory, theory classes practical classes uh, which will be related to your research or which will be related to some theory theory uh, knowledge of something let's say for some instrument you are going to learn then some research methodology you are going to learn so many different things are there different institute follow different pattern of coursework the only sole motive of coursework is to get you ready for the research okay generally coursework are done for one month or for two semesters of your research or of your phd so during the first year you are going to go through all this coursework now talking about coursework as i said that two things are followed one is that either you are directly enrolled into a coursework without choosing a supervisor so once you take admission you are directly you have to go through uh, the coursework and at the end of the coursework you are you will be allowed to choose a supervisor this thing generally happens in iits and isers okay not all the iits not all the isers but yeah some iits and some isers follow this particular uh, method of choosing supervisor that once you have to complete the coursework and after completion of coursework you can choose a supervisor you can choose a lab that means after one year of your phd you are going to get to know that in which lab you are going to do your phd whereas in the majority of other institutes universities csr labs uh, i in many other iits and isers it is followed that you are given with a lab itself like once you take the admission initially only while taking the admission only you get to know that this is my lab you are going to get enrolled under under a particular supervisor or under a particular professor uh, there you will be having like uh, uh, you will get to know already that this is the supervisor under whom I will, i'll be working so you will also be doing something in the research uh, like few things you will be learning throughout the first year under the supervision of your supervisor or maybe he will assign some uh, senior to you so that you can learn the basic skills so that is one thing which you will be doing and along with that you will be also doing your coursework so this thing is followed in majority of the institute so as i said two methods one 
uh, that you only you are not enrolled into a lab you have to go through the coursework after completing coursework for one year you can choose a lab and second you are enrolled in a lab you work in the lab sidewise and also complete your coursework now coursework completion is very important and it carries certain credit points uh, depending upon your institute it can vary from 12 credits to 20 credits and uh, like these credits are uh, like they are important because once you will be submitting your phd at the final stage of your phd it will be asked that how much credit point you have scored also there are certain rules like in iits if you get less than 7.5 cgpa in your coursework in that case your admission can be cancelled and you can be like uh, like your research will be ended over there terminated over there so that is something which generally IITs follows. In universities, this criteria is little bit lowered. It is somewhere around 6.5 CGPA or in some universities, it is just to uh, pass out, just to pass the coursework. Okay, if you don't, if you fail in a coursework, in that case, your admission will be terminated. So this thing is very important. Coursework is very, very important. That happens throughout the first year. Now, along with all these things, uh, one thing which happens at the end of your coursework that is at the end of your first year of PhD is a comprehensive exam. Now comprehensive exam is something which makes you as an enrolled research scholar to a, a registered research scholar. That means during your coursework you are only enrolled. That's why that option or that uh, criteria of getting cancelled of your uh, PhD uh, like termination of your PhD was there because you are just enrolled into it. You are not registered yet. You get registered after the comprehensive examination. Now, this thing can also vary institute to institute, but generally I'm telling you in the majority of the places this happens. Now, this comprehensive exam can be either uh, like a text exam, like just like a normal exam is there, or it can be a verbal or oral exam, or it can be a PPT presentation. Uh, generally, in most of the institute, it's a PPT presentation. It's a, it's a uh, presentation exam in which you have to present something in front of all the uh, like all the professors or all the supervisors there uh, they see or they look upon that how is your presentation skills depending upon that they give you certain grades so after that comprehensive examination is completed as I said that in the first uh, criteria of selection of professor where uh, in some IITs and ISRs you were not you, you didn't select the supervisor, you just got enrolled into it. You were just doing coursework and after coursework you are you will be doing comprehensive exam and after comprehensive exam you will be enrolled under a supervisor. Whereas in the other institutes comprehensive exam is done uh, sidewise and you already are enrolled in a lab. Alright, so these things are the major things which happens during the first year of your PhD. Also, uh, one more important thing that during this year you are also enrolled or you are also a uh, given a DRC committee or in some places it is called DAC committee or in some places it is also called as DC committee. So this is doctoral research committee or doctoral committee which is made uh, to see that how is your progress going on during your research. So this committee has a very important role throughout your PhD life. So it it checks after every or it, it sees that after every six months how is your progress for your PhD is going on. So it might consist of three supervisors or five supervisors from your institute itself. It's an internal committee which checks or which looks upon your uh, like uh, uh, your uh, progress after every six months. So after every six months you have to show that what you have done in the in the last six months to this doctoral research committee or doctoral committee. They will look upon your progress and they will uh, assign you or they will uh, like tell you that yes you are your work is satisfactory to be taken in the next semester. So they, this is something which is done to look upon that after every six months there is a progress in the student. Also in some any case if let's say there is some conflict between the uh, scholar and the, uh, and the supervisor there is something which is not working out over there then also DRC committee or the DC committee interferes over there they look upon that what is the issue and they uh, tell the best solution which is possible over there. So all in all, these are the few things which happen in the initial years of your PhD. I hope you guys understood few things. You got to know new things that what exactly happens once you join a particular institute. Do let me know if you have any other questions regarding PhD or regarding what happens in PhD and all. Uh, if you will be giving me certain questions, I'll be making videos on them in detail. And like that, we can educate many people regarding research and PhD. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Until then. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.